Good morning, one and all present here. I'm Sharmila A, Assistant Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, with Devalaka College of Engineering, Mysuru. So welcome to Gate uh, 2023. As in the previous session uh, regarding wastewater engineering, so we concentrated on uh, the aspects like what are the source of our effluent, uh, wastewater. So what is the uh, flow for uh, the fate of uh, wastewater? Then uh, what are the um, sewer designs? So what are the factors uh, for the designing of sewers? Um, then we concentrated on the characteristics of uh, wastewater and we started knowing what is exactly uh, BOD, COD and other characteristics. So in this uh, session, we will concentrate on um, the uh, domestic wastewater uh, treatment with the primary, secondary treatment and different discharge standards and also uh, sludge disposal methods with the reuse of treated wastewater. So this all we uh, started knowing about uh, how what are the calculation for BOD uh, on a laboratory uh, analysis. Then and these are some of the questions which may appear in the exams, uh, competitive exams. Rapid test to indicate the intensity of pollution in river is always uh, DO. If the DO concentration is uh, very high, that indicates uh, the oxygen, uh, the river is rich in the dissolved oxygen. So this all we started uh, knowing in the previous um, session. Okay. Um, now the, we'll move to the next uh, question regarding uh, DO analysis. A wastewater sample diluted to 100 times with aerated uh, water as an initial DO of 7 mg per liter and after 5 days of incubation at uh, 20 degrees centigrade and the DO was 0. The BOD of the wastewater is. So here if we know the, co the method of analysis of DO, usually the DO uh, for analysis of uh, uh, BOD uh, DO is one of the main criteria. So the uh, DO will be increased uh, by aeration method and that will be considered as diluted water for analysis of uh, a BOD for the given sample. So normally if this is a case, this indicates that the BOD was 7 at the initial and after 5 days seems to be 0. So we cannot uh, consider that uh, there is uh, uh, no DO. So maybe there is uh, some huge quantity of waste has been introduced so the so hence the BOD concentration may be higher so it's very difficult for us to determine so the answer is cannot be determined so next question is if a BOD test 5 ml of waste is added to 295 milligrams of aerated water sorry milliliter of aerated water initial DO content of the diluted sample is 7.8 mg per liter and after five days of incubation at 20 degrees centigrade, the DO content of the sample is reduced to 4.4 uh, 4 .4 mg per liter. The beauty of the wastewater. So, uh, using the formula which we uh, understood in the previous session, so we can make use of that formula like dilution factor. So, here the dilution factor uh, with the initial minus, minus uh, into multiplied by dilution factor, we can calculate the. A BOD of the wastewater 2.4 mg per liter. Okay, self purification of the stream. So, the next important concept in a wastewater treatment is uh, before discharging a treated effluent, uh, so we should be aware of a self purification of the, you know, the stream uh, where uh, the wastewater is uh, effluent is usually often discharged. So this is one main criteria even for the taking addition for uh, installation of uh, any new industries or anything else. So let us know what exactly is self purification of the stream. Wastewater discharge uh, into the river or stream. So normally what happens when the wastewater discharge or the effluent is discharged. So BOD mix, mix increasingly, in, uh, BOD will uh, mix uh, at the starting stage at the, at the point of uh, the uh, outfall. And there the DO concentration is very less. BOD reduces at certain instance as the BOD concentration at the starting because of n number of activities and environmental activities that is reduction in the BOD and reaches saturation. So hence the DO concentration also increases but the BOD reduction takes place. So uh, purification of a river by itself is called a self purification. So what are the conditions uh, favorable for uh, dilution is suspended soils removed from wastewater 
and volume of receiving water, dilution water with a high DO, currents available, no toxic in wastewater. Um, so these are some of the uh, condition which is favorable for dilution. So normally dilution uh, with the increase in quantity of waste on the, on the river water or stream water, so dilution will be very high. So along with that um, <coughs> velocity of volume of receiving water, dilution with a high degrees of uh, DO, if the area is availability is very high, normally the uh, DO concentration is also high. <coughs> standards is dilution factor. Above 500, normally the standards of prediction requires no treatment is required. Raw sewage can be directly discharged into the river. But as of now, this has been changed. At minimum, treatment has to be provided and the effluent has to be discharged as per the um, maintaining a norms uh, set by the standards uh, for effluent. Between 300 to 500, primary treatment uh, such as um, um, PSC is required so that uh, suspended solids concentration is less than 150 milligrams per liter. So similarly, lesser than 10, the suspended solids uh, should be less than 50 mg per liter and BOD if I less than 20 mg per liter. So let us know uh, the factors affecting self purification capacity. So with your, I'm explaining this concept with an ex taking an example of um, an industry releasing its attitude effluent to the nearby stream. So let us consider that as uh, discharge uh, w QW, BOD of the wastewater, BODW, and uh, DO of the wastewater, w, DOW. And uh, uh, at upstream, before uh, the effluent enters, um, the discharge of the stream, let it be QV and the BOD, sorry, QR, BOD uh, of the river is BODR and uh, DO of the river, DOR. So after the point of entry of effluent discharge, then whatever we calculated, let us call that as uh, discharge as Q mix, BOD as BOD mix and TO as BO mix. So normally to calculate the concentration after the effluent has been discharged, then for the combined wastewater, Q mix is calculated is equal to uh, QR plus QW. And for the combined BOD uh, and or also for any other uh, parameters, normally we consider this uh, equations. BOD mix is equal to QR into BOD R plus QW into BOD W by Q1 uh, by QR plus QW. So this is a normal equation which is usually preferred for calculating any uh, parameters uh, in a downstream. So this is the same concept and the mass balance for initial mixing. So entry of waste into the river. So this is a river flow and its characteristics. And after mix, what is the characteristics of the mixed uh, uh, combined flow. So uh, usually to calculate uh, the uh, DO or any parameter, this is a uh, formula which we ex I explained in the previous uh, uh, slide. And along with that initial DO deficit at the point exactly where the effluent is entering. So normally there is a deficit in the BO. So that can be calculated using the formula. Uh, D A is equal to D not S minus D O. So D A is initial D O deficit per mg per liter and D S is the saturated D O concentration. So we'll come to know this uh, initial deficit after mixing that is D A is equal to D O S minus. So this we calculated in using the formula, this formula. So e easily we can calculate what is the D A that is initial uh, deficit. So we came across one concept called a saturation DO concentration in a natural water. Normally, depending on few parameters, uh, as uh, temperature as one main parameter, so we can uh, easily the DO can be calculated. So there is always a DO saturation DO with respect to the temperature, uh, which is standard. That is an ultimate uh, DO. Um, so here there is one uh, uh, table which specify the relation between temperature, increase in temperature and uh, the chloride concentration in a water with uh, 0 to varying from 0 to 15,000 mg per liter and what is the DO concentration with uh, 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 parameters, considering the parameters of temperature and chloride concentration. You can just observe with the temperature 0 degree centigrade and with the a no chloride concentration, the saturated uh, DO uh, is 14.62 mg per liter. It goes on decreases with a change in the concentration of a chloride concentration without 
any change in the temperature. But obviously, when there is increase in the temperature and increase in the DEVO chloride concentration, normally DEVO goes on and decreases. So initial ultimate BOD concentration, uh, uh, when the concentration of BOD in a uh, effluent is very huge, it uh, directly affects the DO concentration. So uh, here is a relation to calculate uh, the um, L value, that is ultimate BOD. So it is calculated using L is equal to B naught BOD uh, by 1 minus C to the power of minus KT and LU, that is ultimate BOD, uh, QW by LW into LW by QR into LR by QW into QR. So this is a relation which we usually uh, consider to calculate ultimate BOD. Determination of deoxygenation rate. So let us know what is deoxygenation rate. It's nothing but uh, whenever the uh, atmospheric air uh, is absorbed uh, in the water, it is in the form of uh, dissolved oxygen. So due to n number of activities, uh, the oxygen will be utilized by the microorganism for uh, degrading um, the organic matter uh, to simpler one. So at the time of utilization, the DO goes on decreases. So that is called as deoxygenation, utilization of the oxygen for, by the microorganism for uh, converting a complex organic to simple one. So the rate, uh, rate of deoxygenation, which is usually given by KD into LT. KD is the auction rate of coefficient per day and LT is the ultimate BOD remaining at a time of travel uh, in a stream. Determination of free auction rate and oxidation rate. So how we can determine? So that is using the formula KR into D. So we uh, K suffix R is re aeration constant. So now re aeration is exactly opposite to deoxygenation. So re aeration is nothing but absorption of oxygen by the atmospheric air and converting that into dissolved oxygen. Uh, so due to uh, the factors what we observed in the previous slides, that uh, reoxygenation rate mainly depends on the quantity, uh, uh, the area uh, exposed to atmospheric air, uh, the velocity of the flow. So all these are the factors. And D is the uh, dissolved oxygen deficit. Uh, D OS is saturation level of uh, oxygen. D no, uh, DO is the actual dissolved oxygen given the location at the, uh, at the given downstream level. So, and also based on the, because we observed that uh, uh, DO is also directly related to our temperature. So, for a uh, correct co rate coefficient uh, with respect to temperature, so we can make use of this equation KR is equal to KR into uh, KR at uh, 20 degrees centigrade theta t to the power of minus 20. If theta is 1.024. And uh, one more well-known equation to calculate what is the rate of oxygenation, what is the rate of deoxygenation, what is where exactly the DO deficit occurs at a downstream. So to know all this, we make use of uh, one well-known uh, uh, equation that is called as t tuples equation. DO as a function of time, and also it is called as oxygen, oxygen uh, sacker. So rate of increase in DO deficit is equal to rate of deoxygenation minus rate of re-aeration. Uh, so this is the one equation which is usually uh, considered for calculating the rate of increase in DO deficit. And so D, D by DT is equal to KD into LT minus KR into D. Uh, so for this, after integration, after solving, uh, we'll get the equation D suffix D is equal to KD uh, into L0 by KR minus KD. Uh, into e to the power of minus kd into t minus e to the power of minus kr into t, uh, closing the bracket, plus b a into e to the power of minus kr into t. So this is the equation which is usually preferred for calculating the DO deficit using Sittepoff's equation. This is the Sittepoff's equation. This is for log e and this is for log tan. So critical time and uh, the point where exactly the DO deficit is higher. So for that, we make use of these two equations, Tc is equal to 1 minus Kr in minus Kd into natural log of Kr minus Kd, 1 minus Da into Kr minus Kd by Kd into La. So this is a, a time exactly at where the critical DO deficit occurs and this is the critical DO deficit. Dc is equal to Kd La by Kr minus Ka in e to the power of minus Kd into Tc minus e to the power of minus Kr into Tc 
plus da t to the power of minus k r into t c. So this is nothing but here we make use of t c which we have calculated for critical with uh, using the formula for calculating critical time. Okay, the remaining uh, factors uh, which affects a state of uh, self fabrication capacity of the river is dispersion due to currents. So uh, if the velocity is very high, normally dispersion rate is very high. Sedimentation, if the uh, velocity is very high, sometimes uh, the, uh, the component or the pollutants may not uh, uh, settle at the bottom. Uh, if the velocity is very less, then sedimentation uh, means process is very high. Oxidation, oxidation and reduction. So due to the uh, uh, degradation of uh, the complex organic matter to simple, so uh, either they make uh, bacteria may make use of microsome may make use of oxygen or there is radiation uh, liberation of oxygen so oxidation reduction uh, reactions takes place temperature as we observed uh, at zero degree higher uh, saturated to will be there and sunlight uh, if anaerobic condition exists uh, uh, anaerobic condition exists when the sun rays do not penetrate uh, till the depth uh, so normally if the uh, wider the river with the less uh, depth, uh, sunlight can penet penetrate uh, till the uh, bottom of the uh, river. So this is one more uh, concept, uh, zones of pollution in a stream. Uh, so it stands from the point where uh, the different is discharged um, and uh, uh, till where uh, due to self education capacity, the uh, river achieve or attain to original uh, you know, position. So that they, uh, based on this activity, the zones will be categorized into zone of degradation, zone of active decomposition, zone of re recovery and the clear water zone. So let us understand uh, this uh, uh, zones with respect to oxygen occur, mm, like how oxygen, oxygen varies uh, from the point where the, the polluted tart is being discharged uh, to the point where it achieves to our uh, to a saturated uh, DO. Oxygen deficit state is represented by D at any time is in a polluted uh, river is a difference between actual DO content of water at that time and the difference between actual DO content of water at the time and saturated DO content at the water temperature. So normally to calculate uh, these are uh, the main uh, concept which you to understand what is the actual DO and what is the saturated DO. So with respect to the point and the time. So this picture depicts uh, the information that how the DO varies uh, from point of discharge of effluent and what is the how the BOD concentration varies with respect to the from the point uh, till the uh, clear zone is achieved. Okay. So here you can observe that if I take uh, an example of BOD. So from the point where the effluent is being discharged, the BOD is very high and it starts decreasing as it moves and to a certain stretch and based on its concentration how actually there is variation in each particular zones can be identified and similarly along with the bod even the do so do is very high at the uh, before the point where exactly the pollutant has been discharged but once at the point where uh, the uh, effluent enters do decreases to a maximum extent and here is nothing but this indicates that where exactly the DO deficit occurs. So from a C type of equation, one can easily analyze that at which particular point uh, from the point where the effluent has been discharged, the DO deficit is maximum. That is critical DO occurs. And is good goes on increases as uh, uh, the degradation of or uh, the BOD or organic matter uh, has been completely uh, done with the help of microbes. So, as the DO is a DO is equal to D is equal to saturation DO minus actual DO. So, to maintain a clear condition in a neighbor, actual oxygen defici deficit must be nil. So, but actually, this cannot be uh, uh, that much easier because uh, there are n number of due to n number of activities or due to industrial discharge, normally uh, at different uh, point. The discharge point will be different, so it's very difficult to maintain a clean condition. Uh, rates of oxygen oxygenation and deoxygenation is the uh, main thing in calculating the DO deficit. So, 
So this picture depicts uh, what exactly uh, is so how the DO concentration varies with respect to the time, uh, with respect to stretch. So just you can observe here. So critical point occurs where the maximum uh, DO deficit occurs. So that point is called as critical point. So once it reaches critical point, due to re aeration again, there is increase in DO. So this indicates that all the uh, organic matter in the, uh, the wastewater has been acted by the microorganism and there is not that much uh, so where the oxygenation rate is higher than a deoxygenation rate so microbes doesn't make use of that much high oxygenation uh, so, so oxygen requirement for the degradation of uh, complex organic matter so this is very important in analyzing uh, uh, reverse stretch or uh, uh, stream stretch so where exactly devos deficit occurs and also it uh, gives an information that uh, uh, whether the industry is following the standards uh, in before discharging in any effluent to the nearby water bodies. The reoxygenation coefficient K of a stream uh, is uh, 0.3 at 20 degrees centigrade. If the K value is 32 degree centigrade, uh, it's likely to be. So they have given two different uh, temperature. So we have to calculate what is the K. So already we came to know that uh, there is a relation that exists between the uh, temperature and the uh, K value, that is coefficient value. So Kr of T minus T, which you have to identify, Kr of uh, uh, 20 degree, uh, 1.016 to the power of T minus 20 degree. So this we know 0.3, so we can easily calculate it's 0.36. So now reaction energy coefficient at uh, 32 degree centigrade is 0.36. So one more problem. A portion of wastewater sample was subjected to a standard VOD test uh, yielding a value of 180 mg per liter. The reaction rate uh, is 20 degrees centigrade. was taken at 0.18 per day. The reaction rate constant at other temperature may be estimated by Kt is equal to K uh, uh, to the power of uh, K of 20, 1.047 to the power of 2, T minus 20. Temperature at which the other portion of the sample should be tested is exert to exert the same VOD in 2.5 uh, days. So here they have given two different um, um, the, the value of uh, the VOD at uh, two different uh, degree centigrade at the base C. So we have to calculate that uh, what is the uh, temperature at which the other portion of sample should be tested. So even for this, so this data has been as already specified. So using this equation, that is why not, why is equal to 1 minus little. So we have two different uh, uh, values here. So that is y1 and y2 is same, 180 mg per liter. But we make use of two different uh, equations to calculate this value with respect to time, with respect to temperature. So using this equation, we can calculate uh, what is KD2. After calculating this equation, use the equation KD2 minus is equal to KD1 of one point. 0470 to the power of 20. So we can easily calculate what is T because that unknown is T. Yeah. So 35.09. So the answer is D. A sagna dissolved the oxygen curve results because of what? So because of the rate of uh, addition and depletion of oxygen from the stream. The answer is 3. Minimum DO content in a river for any uh, activity to survive, uh, activity life to survive is 4 mg per liter. See, in certain stations, the uh, wastewater discharge into a river mixes with the river water incinerates are completely following the data. Following the data is available as uh, wastewater. For the wastewater, they have given DO different and discharge rate 1.1 mg per liter. And for river, it's high DO, flow rate 8.7 mg per liter. Uh, Mr. Meter cube per uh, cube. So, temperature is 20 degree. So, initial amount of DO mix in the wastewater shall be. So, what is that? So, we have some calculation. So, in the starting slide, we observed that how to calculate the DO mix. Uh, so, when the uh, wastewater is entered. So, using the formula, we can calculate what is the uh, DO mix that is 7.6 mg per liter. A wastewater from a city containing high concentration of BOD organics, uh, biodegradable organics, is being steadily discharged into a river flow, a uh, flowing river at location S. If the rate of the aeration of the river water is lower than rate of deoxygenation, deoxygenation uh, degradation of organic, then the DO of the river. 
so here they have given one uh, for uh, picture so uh, at the location point uh, s if the waste is uh, the do concentration is uh, this much that is s so where exactly uh, the degradation or uh, deficit occurs so this is at, at the lowest point of the point uh, stream downwards at location after discharging so normally uh, where the do concentration is very uh, low there so we can uh, identify maximum deficit a township is uh, treated with uh, to treat uh, 5 lakhs liters of uh, sewage per day which has a 5 day VOD at 150 ppm acceleration upon is used for the purpose Effluent can have a BOD of 115 ppm. The load uh, to be is 40 kg of uh, 5 day BOD per hectare per day, the required area of the pond. So, even here they have given all the data. So, what is the uh, wastewater discharge and uh, uh, what is the BOD concentration in the wastewater? So, using that, like BOD has to be removed is 150 minus 15, 135. So, 135 my, uh, multiplied by this. Uh, Five lakh uh, liters of water, wastewater, and uh, they have given hydraulic uh, loading rate. So using this formula, we can calculate required areas of sewage uh, uh, that is resumed by assume and uh, organic uh, loading. So with this, we can calculate what is the area required. Presence of excess nitrate in the river water indicates recent pollution of water. So if the nitrate is very high, what actually what is the state of uh, uh, the river. So this uh, is nothing but past pollution of uh, waste. If it is ammonia is present, then it's recent pollution of our water with a sewage. So treatment of wastewater. So we'll move to the next concept treatment. So here treatment will be either uh, physical or chemical or even biological treatments. So any one this can be preferred. Normally for a sewage, uh, all three will be preferred. Physical is only a uh, physical force predominates. So it is also known as uh, uh, unit operation. And if uh, chemicals and biological methods are used, it is called as unit process. So these are the levels of treatment depending on what we have to remove. So primary treatment, basking, split chamber, skimming tank, primary sedimentation tanks. Uh, so this is a flow chart for domestic wastewater treatment plant. So normally this flow is uh, common for domestic wastewater, raw sewage, which enters through the bath screens, such screens, and then the chamber. Then it moves towards the primary sedimentation and aeration tank and secondary sedimentation tank, and uh, which has been uh, achieved according to the standards, to meter standards, move to tertiary uh, uh, treatment. Some amount of sludge, if we prefer this uh, for recirculation, uh, some amount of sludge which is active in the nature can be again sent to, uh, either to the sludge digestion uh, tank uh, or can recycle the sludge where it is active in the microorganisms. And the sludge will be disposed with the uh, suitable, uh, taking suitable measures. So, bar screens. So, normally it is a uh, three different types: coarse screens, medium, and fine screens. Uh, so, depending on the space available or uh, or what is the uh, screens that uh, what is the size of the screens that has to be removed. Uh, so, normally it is uh, for rectangular uh, screens made up of steels with 30 to 60 degree inclination. So, where uh, to increase the uh, area or to decrease the velocity. Normally, velocity maintained is pointed to 1 meter per second. And for fine screens, the perforation is still more lesser than the previous uh, 1.5 mm to 3. And very efficient, and even you can remove 20 percent to solid, so suspended solids from the wastewater. Uh, commutators, uh, not in all the places, uh, commutators is preferred. So, it is nothing but uh, we can call it as a straight uh, shredders where uh, it uh, breaks the solids, large uh, solids to uh, smaller size of uh, 6 mm. So, normally it is placed before the grid chamber. Grid chamber uh, here it is designed in such a way that it should not allow the organic matter to settle. So, grids are nothing but uh, sands, sand, uh, small gravels, cinders, broken glass, or heavy solid materials. And uh, here only inert dry solids, uh, which is heavier in water, will be removed. And organic uh, matter which is uh, present in should not be removed in this. So types is rectangular horizontal detritus tank, aerated grid chamber, square horizontal flow, vortex flow. 
So rectangular from the picture, you can easily identify that it can remove uh, particles up to 0.2 mm uh, in size. And the depth and the below, the depth of the channel and length of the channel is designed in such a way that uh, it requires some uh, specific velocity, which is called as critical velocity, so that uh, should not allow uh, the, uh, the petrusable or organic matter uh, to settle. So that is a stank, it is a square in nature, and organic matter is returned back uh, to the effluent, uh, into, into the effluent here. So uh, here the uh, vertical sides of the tank is usually tapered at the bottom, aerated uh, grid chamber, which will not allow the component to settle uh, due to the aeration that occurs from the bottom of the uh, tank. A square horizontal flow type uh, employed uh, normally at earlier stages, uh, which can remove even a size of 0.15 millimeter. Vortex type. So here the uh, component will not be allowed to settle. So design criteria, one uh, main thing which we have to concentrate. Uh, peak flow 2.5 to 3, uh, detention time 30 to 90 seconds, usually 60 seconds will be considered. Flow velocity at horizontal flow, uh, 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 meter per second. Settling velocity, so it depends mainly on uh, the specific gravity. Uh, depth of liquid 1 to 1.5 meter, length is 2 to uh, 3 to 25 meters. Uh, quantity of bits that is usually removed is 0 0.022 to 0 0.075 meter cube per uh, 1000 meter cube of flow. Overflow rate is 1200 to 1700 meter cube per meter square day. So, oil and grease tank removal. Uh, so, normally it is called as skimming tanks uh, made to remove oil and grease. Before sedimentation tank, it is usually preferred. So, it is blown at the bottom uh, so that. Uh, it uh, scum formation takes place and rise to the uh, compartment, uh, which is usually separate, uh, which is usually provided as separate uh, uh, from the uh, normal tank. So that is a separate compartment is preferred. So normally the detection time uh, is three to five minutes. Uh, compressed state 300 to 6,000 meter cube per million liters of wastewater. Surface area 0.00622. At what a minimum uh, raising velocity uh, for a discharged wastewater. Sedimentation tank, one main uh, uh, tank where uh, we allow uh, component under settle under gravity. So uh, it is usually preferred before uh, uh, normally uh, two twice we can uh, prefer this sedimentation tank after biological treatment and before biological treatment, depending on the requirements or uh, and sometimes a coagulants is also used in a sedimentation tank. So uh, based on a working principle of sedimentation tank, uh, uh, the other two tanks like septic tank, which is usually preferred uh, in a rural areas uh, or semi-urban areas and emov tanks. So here yeah, the main uh, force, which is driving force uh, for uh, particles to settle is the velocity of the flow, shape and size of the particle, viscosity or temperature of wastewater. These are the main uh, uh, driving force uh, which uh, is usually maintained with a design so that uh, maximum uh, component are settled. Velocity of the flow is, can be reduced by increasing the length of travel or size and shape or tree by coagulation by increasing the size of the size, size and uh, of the particles uh, by detaining the particles for longer time in a sedimentation basins. Uh, so principle in what is organic matter have a specific gravity usually greater than one uh, and. In a steel condition, like when there is no movement under gravity, it is uh, settled. In turbulent condition, it is kept under suspension. Uh, turbulence is retarded by offering a storage uh, to the sewage. So types is uh, either circular or uh, rectangular. For circular, radial or spiral flow and rectangular, long, narrow tank with the horizontal flow. Uh, so the normal condition removal, what we can expect for suspended particles, 60 to 65% of suspended particles and 30 to 35 percent of VOD. So it's rectangular sedimentation tank, uh, which is of one. In majority of the cases, we prefer rectangular sedimentation tank. And this is circular sedimentation tank. OK. So uh, uh, many uh, other uh, types based on its function. Uh, sedimentation tank we can uh, categorize into intermittent or continuous. Intermittent is wastewater kept for a rest of 24 hours. Uh, it functions intermittently. And in the continuous flow, uh, uh, the velocity is reduced, and uh, the flow is uh, always uh, there continuously. 
velocity can be reduced by providing sufficient length okay short circuiting one major problem that is observed in uh, sedimentation flow should be uniformly distributed throughout the tank if uh, there is any uh, such uh, currents like uh, permit substantial amount of water to pass directly through the tank without being detained uh, for intended time uh, so then the flow is short circuited so for proper design uh, there should be a proper inlet and outlet design so where we can uh, reduce the short uh, circuiting uh, so displacement efficiency can be calculated by the flow through uh, period by detention tank and skimming tank uh, clean and sludge removal uh, pump uh, to uh, into the sludge uh, digestion tank uh, so normally we make use of the, this equation for calculating the digestion tank for rectangular tank t is equal to volume of tank by rate of flow b l into h by q for circulation uh, circular tank normally detention time is calculated by d square into 0.011 d plus 0.785 into h by q secondary sedimentation tank uh, we are moving towards uh, biological filtration and uh, asp that is uh, at anaerobic attached and suspended uh, flow effluent from primary sedimentation tanks contains about uh, 60 to 80% of unstable organic matter so this is a major uh, challenge which while uh, adopting uh, what type of treatment uh, uh, in a secondary treatment to either is it uh, filtration or activity sludge process uh, trickling filters or activity sludge process so trickling filters uh, uh, prime from a sedimentation tank whatever the treated way uh, effluent pass through the trickling filters and again it is passed through secondary sedimentation tank and uh, here the recirculation ratio has to be considered where uh, active microbes will uh, enter through the primary sedimentation so this has to be calculated based on a requirement uh, secondary sedimentation designed to, uh, to work on aerobic bacterial decomposition because aerobic bacteria are more active than anaerobic so hence decomposition does not uh, produce any bad smell or gases and even uh, rate of uh, degradation is uh, decomposition is very high filters type of contact by intermediate sand filters trickling filters miscellaneous type of filters under specific special circumstances so two types normally conventional or high rate filters standard uh, sorry conventional or ordinary or standard or low rate and high rate filters so high rate filters uh, uh, when the recirculation is provision is made then we call it as high circling high trickling filters high rate trickling filters pumping is a part of uh, filter effluent uh, to a primary sedimentation are passing uh, repassing through primary sedimentation tank of filters purification of uh, waste water uh, through aerobic uh, bacteria okay organic matter oxidizes while passing down uh, through the filter media so this construction is either it is constructed above the ground or rectangular or circular in uh, nature so usually the wastewater is uh, sprayed through the nozzles and there is a rotary distribution uh, with the four arms and equally distributed rpm what we have to maintain is two rpm uh, for a smaller uh, distributors to uh, half rpm for large and distribution of either it is uh, 15 to 20 centimeter above the top and spray nozzles filters uh, doses to two to three minutes and rest for five to ten minutes and the trickling filters this is an picture showing trickling filter a filter media normally is a coarser material uh, with a size 25 to 75 mm quality is not affected by the quality should be in such a way that it should not be affected by acidic uh, uh, component and should be hard depth is two to three fine material at the bottom or fine sorry coarse material at the bottom fine at the top petrified clay can also be used a slope one in 300 uh, towards the main effluent channel so some of the operation problem which is absurd here is a filter of uh, flies that is psychoda is a major problem so to avoid that sometimes benzene hexachloride can be used and uh, odor nuisance uh, fixed hdso gas release of this uh, chlorinated wastewater is the best method ponding trouble voids of filters get clogged uh, controlling controlling is chlorinated wastewater or adding copper sulfate and resume for a time for to kill the bacteria and these are the uh, uh, design criteria which we have to maintain for uh, conventional high rate filters now coming move to active sludge process uh, so it is under suspension so effluent from a sedimentation tanks uh, mixed with 30 to 30 to 30 percent of the uh, volume of activated sludge activated sludge is nothing but the treated uh, sludge 
which is rich or high in uh, active uh, microorganisms. It's a mixture and radiated tank uh, uh, with a large quantity of eight to four to eight hours. So normally uh, the moving organism oxidizes organic uh, matter. So it is always under kept, kept under uh, suspension by agitation. So effluent obtain is very high quality means maximum removal of BOD 80 to 95%, bacterial removal up to 90 to 95%. And also land requirement is lesser compared to trickling filters. So uh, operation to ensure falling is uh, apply su sufficient amount of water, uh, oxygen. Rate of volume of uh, activated sludge added uh, should be to the wastewater, should be kept constant. So uh, some uh, uh, design aspects is 3 to 4 meter depth uh, and 4 to 6 meter wide, length 20 to 200 meter, detention under 48 hours for domestic wastewater. And method of diffusion uh, uh, aeration is uh, diffused air aeration or mechanical aeration, combined aeration. Some design criteria, aeration tank loadings, aeration aerated period, uh, hydraulic mean, uh, that is HRT, BOD, uh, the volumetric loading, uh, FPM ratio, food to microorganism ratio, sludge chase. So these are the main four uh, design considered which has to be uh, preferred. So a HRT is nothing but uh, volume of the tank by rate of wastewater flow in the tank. Then uh, volumetric BOD loading uh, is mass of the BOD applied per day to the aeration tank through inflamed wastewater by volume of aerated tank. Uh, then F by M ratio, daily BOD loading uh, applied to the aeration system by total microbial mass in the system. And uh, uh, initial microbial mass, that is MLSS uh, uh, into V. And sludge change, uh, it has to be calculated. It varies from 30 to 3 to 30 hours. SRT, and that is uh, mean cell residential time, uh, mass of MLSS uh, in aeration by mass of suspended uh, per day. So these are some uh, equations which we have to prov uh, prefer for calculating the uh, the design uh, aspects. The main constant uh, gas generated during area big uh, digestion uh, uh, sludge are uh, through trickling filters. So trickling filters are used to remove the uh, organic matter. Activated sludge process is uh, is nothing but the sludge in the secondary tank after uh, aeration and rich in nutrients. So this is one uh, e uh, problem. A complete uh, activated sludge process used to treat a wastewater flow on the one MLD of, of having a BOD with 200 the biomass uh, concentration of aeration tank is 2,000 mg per liter. Concentration of net biomass leaving the system is 50. The aeration tank has a volume of uh, 2,000. So what is the hydraulic retention time you have to calculate? And also what is the average time for the biomass to stay in a system? So for that, we make use of this equation. The hydraulic retention time T is equal to V by Q into 24. So using the formula, we can calculate what is T. Then uh, we can calculate what is the theta value. So uh, using this formula, So this is nothing but uh, the, which of the following uh, sea waste treatment method uh, is inherent problem on the ponding and fusion that is uh, trickling filter. So uh, normally uh, as per the norms set by uh, C, uh, uh, um, uh, set by pollution control board, the CPHU manual will clearly give us an idea that what is the concentration of an effluent before discharging either to uh, the surface water or public sewers or land for inspection and marine or coastal areas. So the use of treated wastewater, normally it can be used for urban uses, agricultural use, recreational impoundments, environmental uh, reuse, industrial reuse. So if, so if I want to summarize in this session, we understood uh, the characteristics of wastewater, that too with respect to BOD, self reducing capacity of the river, uh, wastewater treatment plant, uh, primary and secondary, and the use of treated wastewater. So with this, I am uh, closing the session. So thank you one and all. Uh